Guyana would have enacted a series of legislation that speaks to the protection of the rights of the child. Together, these legislations are focused on delivering judicial outcomes deemed to be in the best interest of the child. Some of the enacted legislation includes the Child Protection Act, the Adoption of Children Act, the Sexual Offenses Act, and the Custody, Contact, Guardianship, and Maintenance Act. Guyana has also signed on to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Child. Despite this, when it comes to addressing the issue of cross-border protection of the rights of children, much more has to be done both by Guyana and the region. In this week's edition of Guyana 411, we take a look at the Hague Convention Conference, which was recently hosted by Guyana in collaboration with UNICEF. I am Renette LaFleur, and this is Guyana 411. Stay tuned. The Hague Convention and the Hague Conference have been in the news lately. But what really is the Hague? Are you speaking about a country? Here is a look which provides the understanding. The Hague Conference on Private International Law is a global intergovernmental organization which develops and services multilateral legal instruments which respond to global needs. Hague Conventions refers to the treaties that were formulated by this intergovernmental organization. Dr. Christoph Bernasconi, Secretary General of the Hague Conference on Private International Law, explains the work of his organization. The Hague Conference on Private International Law, which is an intergovernmental organization which develops international treaties, conventions as we call them, uh, to which states can then become uh, a party. And these treaties, conventions, they deal with international uh, issues involving private people or commercial operators. Um, so our work has to do with creating uh, an environment that is conducive to cross-border trade, cross-border investment, uh, cross-border commerce, creating legal certainty and predictability for people and operators to know the rules of the game, as it were, before they do a commercial transaction or invest uh, abroad. The period 1893 to 1904 saw the conference adopting seven international conventions which were subsequently replaced by modern instruments. From 1951 to 2008, some 38 international conventions were adopted. Even when they are not ratified, the conventions have an influence upon legal systems in both member and non-member states. They also form a source of inspiration for efforts to unify private international law at the regional level, for example, within the Organization of American States, OAS, or the European Union, EU. The most widely ratified conventions deal with the abolition of legislation, which is the apostille, service of process, taking of evidence abroad, access to justice, international child abduction, inter-country adoption, conflicts of laws relating to the form of testamentary dispositions, maintenance obligations and recognition of divorces. We have, uh, for the time being, 81 members, that's 80 members plus the European Union, plus another 60 or so states that, without being a member of the organization, are connected uh, by being a party to at least one of our conventions. Guyana is not yet uh, amongst these connected states, so membership is indeed a, a major uh, development that would come also with uh, two very practical uh, advantages. One is that Guyana would then of course be invited to all our meetings, have a voice around the table and participate actively in the negotiations of new uh, treaties. But Guyana would also have um, priority access to technical assistance, which might be important for the implementation of some of these conventions, which might be a bit technical. Being a member comes with this important advantage that you can rely on a priority basis 
uh, on our technical assistance. Um, and uh, Guyana would be uh, amongst the very first uh, states in the region to become uh, a member. Uh, so far only uh, Suriname is, uh, is a member of the organization and a lot of other Caribbean states are not a member but are connected uh, to the work of the Hague Conference by being a party to one uh, convention. So Guyana would immediately jump into the first wagon, uh, as it were, of the train and, and, uh, and catch up and become connected and become a member, have a voice around the table and that would be good for all of us. Private international law is the law administered between private citizens of different countries. It is a set of rules and regulations which are established or agreed upon by citizens of different nations who privately enter into a transaction and which will govern in the event of a dispute. For Guyana, uh, that uh, has an important diaspora and which is uh, opening uh, and, and engaging into uh, more and more cross-border trade and commerce, I think these issues are of uh, very important, of high importance. Um, and the same is true in the uh, other field in which we work heavily which is the child protection uh, issues, cross-border child protection issues. Um, there we have a number of conventions on uh, cross-border child abduction, on uh, child protection matters in general, on inter-country adoption, uh, the effective recovery of maintenance obligations from abroad, which are uh, fundamental treaties which give effect to some of the core principles established in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, to which Guyana is a, is a, is a party. But you haven't protected a single child by just signing up to the UN Convention. You need the machinery to actually enforce it. And this is where the Hague uh, Child Protection Conventions come, uh, come into play. And we are delighted uh, to be here for uh, this uh, regional meeting. It's actually the third meeting for uh, the Caribbean. Recognizing the importance these conventions have for a region like the Caribbean, seeking varied investments and partnerships with developed or first world countries, the Hague organization sought to expand their reach. The director for a Latin American office of the Hague Conference on Private International Law, Ignacio, was amazed at the responsiveness of the Caribbean region towards becoming a party to either of the conventions. Frankly, we are amazed with the results achieved so far. We are here about to start the third Caribbean meeting, and there had already been new designations for the Hague Network of Judges. There have been uh, clear expressions of interest for several conventions. If you see the list of, of participants, you will see that there are many, many uh, AGs coming from other states, uh, officers from Ministers of Foreign Affairs, people that are already operating Hague Conventions in other uh, Caribbean states, what we call central authorities. So uh, our idea is that from now on, I would say, we will change the name of the Latin American office to become Latin American and Caribbean office That's because right. the interest is, is, is clear uh, so we need to do more for, for this region. A country which subscribes to the Hague Conference on Private International Law and is party to its many conventions provides the legal certainty for investors who are guaranteed of the laws which will be applied and which court can hear the matter. I would think that in the next meeting, hopefully, we would have um, a few more Caribbean states already operating uh, some other Hague Conventions. We are hopeful that we'll have um, one or two more Caribbean members of the organizations that can report directly from the work we do uh, uh, at the global level and that they would have a voice to take the Caribbean perspective to our global work, because if we need, if we want to be really global, we need to have the needs and the views of all the regions in this uh, uh, melting point, which is the Hague Conference. So, uh, I think that in, in next meeting we would also would have the chance to think about the regional views to the world also from from. From, a, uh, the, from the region to a global perspective and how also the regional needs and views should start tailoring to, to a considerable extent our agenda as well. To harmonize the implementation of the conventions, the Hague has a secretariat which organizes 
assists in organizing and participates in conferences and seminars held at international, regional, and national levels. This secretariat operates to educate the various persons involved in the implementation of the conventions, which includes judges, central authority personnel, and members of the legal profession. Non-governmental organizations provide interaction at the grassroots levels as they forge ahead in their work of being a voice for the vulnerable in our society. Arguably, they are seen as pioneers in the fight to honor the rights of women and children. The Guyana Bar Association comprises of a number of attorneys with varying and specific areas of expertise. The recently concluded conference saw a number of its members in attendance and seeking the necessary clarity that will aid the process. Justice Stanley Moore believes that the conference was timely, more so that the Bar Association has its role to play. The Bar Association has a role to play in all this. Um, some of the work will be done at the voluntary or the pro bono basis. And I think that um, lawyers do not get or perhaps demand uh, recognition for much of the work that they do on a voluntary and pro bono basis. But yes, you will recall that the uh, president of the Bar Association uh, played a very prominent role in this uh, conference, which is a good thing. And I, I, I venture to think that her presence there is not merely symbolic, <coughs> but that her presence there represents the uh, interest which the Bar Association uh, is taking in all this and the role that they could play in the assisting Guyana to join those conventions where we have not yet signed on to and of course to implement those where we have signed on to. Yes, the Bar Association has a big role to play there. Alternative dispute resolution methods are encouraged even more in the judiciary and attorneys are increasingly deploying such methods to resolve disputes, particularly disputes emanating within the realm of family law. Trained mediator and attorney at law, Tini Husti, comments on the presentation on international family mediation. I think it's a very useful extension for us as local mediators of the concept of mediation, particularly seeing that we have new family procedure rules. We're going, as mediators, we're going to be introduced to using mediation more in a family context. And the fact that we have examples that we can look at from international family mediations is a very useful opportunity for us. In the whole context of that as well, the speakers identified guidelines for those mediations, so that will help us. They also introduced a concept or mentioned a concept which we have not been using in our mediations here, the concept of co-mediation, where you have uh, a, an attorney at law who is a mediator with a child specialist. And uh, the mediation roster in Guyana is made up of both attorneys at law and non-attorneys at law with other skills. And uh, I think the opportunity is useful now with the new environment, the acclimatization to the family court rules for several examples to be followed. So while we may not have the cross-border mediation yet, the lessons learned or the lessons illustrated would be very useful to us in our local context. The question of advancing technology was an area of concern which was developed under the Service Convention, and it saw the Caribbean Court of Justice President, Sir Dennis Byron, explaining his plan for the region. We have tried to eliminate or reduce the use of paper in our judicial process. All matters are filed electronically. All reports, orders made by the court are issued electronically and service of documents are permitted electronically. Uh, so the, and we are, I in fact have developed or are in the, process, in the final stages of developing programs that would facilitate that process in domestic jurisdictions uh, throughout the region. So it's something that we would like to encourage uh, acceptance to. In, in our situation, part of the reason for it had to do with expedition 
and cost. So, for example, if we were receiving pleadings, say from Belize, um, several copies would have to be made and sent to us by courier. Um, then you'll have the process of the registration process and it being returned by courier. And then you'll have the cost involved in, in arranging um, service. We have seen bills where the service of a document has cost the litigant 30 to 40,000 US dollars. And the whole service process has taken a number of weeks, including the process of court. So the, simply by doing this, we have eliminated the cost of, of, of filing and service, reduced it to zero. And we have also reduced the time to five minutes from the time the lawyer pushes it on his button on his desk. So we think that there are many advantages to be gained from pursuing this process. We are in the new electronic information age, and therefore we need to make use of all the latest electronic devices. We have to keep up with modernity. We cannot be neo-Luddites. And therefore, I believe that in the future, the discussion which we are now having will be a matter of history because the new norms will be the, the use and the availability of all the latest technological devices available to court systems throughout the world. Members of the local bar who participated in the conference were informed of the varying Hague conventions, which provides a more effective, efficient, and a cost-effective way of providing services. Even as the Hague Convention Conference provided the opportunity to examine the necessary legislative framework which is needed, government cannot do it alone. A number of other partners are needed for the transformation of the country's legislation. One such organization is the Guyana Bar Association. Whilst Guyana is a party to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child and would have enacted numerous laws to protect their respective rights, Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General Basil Williams says more efforts were needed. We are holding this Hague conference now because one of the first exercises I did as minister was to participate in the Hague Conference in Trinidad. And the program that I was expo exposed to there made me realize how important it was for us here in South America, in Guyana, to also be a part of, and, and take membership of the Hague Convention Conference in the first place and also be a party to the very the, the many treaties that they have which affect children, uh, like ab ab abduction, adoption, custody, maintenance, and, and the like. And then you have um, questions of commerce, legal cooperation, of course, human rights, and a, a variety of other conventions that are very relevant to us in Guyana. Marion Flack, UNICEF Guyana, and the Suriname country representative points to the importance of the Hague Conventions in Guyana. It is extremely important that we have uh, the legal laws in place that protect these children. Um, and this is uh, where uh, I think the, the, the partnership with the HCCH is extremely important. Uh, we shouldn't wait until we hear more uh, stories about uh, illegal adoption, abduction of children here in the Caribbean. We should be very proactive and put the, the legal um, systems uh, in place. Karen de Souza, coordinator of the Red Thread Society, sees the merits in being a signatory to the Hague Conventions. Certainly in relation to abduction, I mean the Convention speaks very specifically to, to speed of action, um, which, which is a necessary thing, um, because, because I believe that, that they aim to have a resolution within a year. Um, 
So that, that can only be down to our benefit. I mean, outside of the convention, we're not talking about one year. We're not talking about less than a year. We're talking about a long, long drawn out process. Um, in terms of adoptions, you know, I, I think that it is important for due diligence to be done um, in, in, in both territories. Um, so haste is, I would say, not as critical as, as in a situation of abduction. Um, and I can only think that um, if, if we are a party to, to this conference, that our own adoption protocols would be improved of necessity. Um, and, and therefore a lot more checking and, and, and ensuring that everything is as it should be, would, would be done. And, and, and that's one of the advantages, I think, of being party to an international agency, that, that, that there are standards that have to be met. The Hague Conference on International Family Law, Legal Cooperation and Commerce, promoting human rights and across-border trade in the Caribbean through Hague Conference conventions, is another move by the administration to further honor the rights of children. Maria Cristina Percival, UNICEF Regional Director for Latin America and the Caribbean, explains the importance UNICEF places on this conference. For UNICEF, this event represents the Caribbean's commitment, promise, and robust political will to work together to build a stronger and better international legal environment for children and adolescents as it relates to private international law and for the protection of children. All Caribbean countries are very closely interlinked from a historical, cultural, economic, and geographical perspectives. This is an important moment for all countries to make a collective commitment to strengthening their private international legal systems according to international standards to better protect their citizens and children in particular. Guyana being a gateway to the Caribbean and Latin America presents the opportunity for easy migration. This free movement which exists in a globalized society does not augur well for the rights of children. A lot of the presentations on the Hague Conventions had so much resonance for the, I guess, I guess the national law and the national responsibility. Um, I, I actually think that uh, once, once we hopefully become a member of the uh, conference, that there would be a lot more focus and a lot more recognition and attitude um, that, 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 that addresses child rights. Um, at the moment, I think we probably pay more lip service than, than actually implement the, the agreements in the Convention for the Rights of the Child. Um, but but so, so, so one is to, I guess, push the national um, agencies to actually implement in a serious way what we know to be necessary. The hosting of a conference of this magnitude creates the legal framework to address key cross-border issues pertaining to children. The next thing is that, that the, the international aspect, which is what the Hague uh, Conference is about, would actually be of, of really excellent service to, to a number of situations that, that, that we, are, we are aware of in, in Guyana. So the, the child abduction, the International Child, child Abduction Convention, which you know, tie, will tie the courts up. You have the impossible situation of trying to locate a child in another country and trying to use the law to, to get the child returned. This is what this convention is about. Um, maintenance, you know, absentee fathers um, who, who take off not dealing with the child, um, not dealing with the child's survival, um, that this is another place where, where you can potentially get some help out of, out of this convention. So it's, it's, you know, I mean, 
I wish I wish we could look at the international in the national so that the child maintenance arrangements here could be more effective instead of women having to spend so many hours running to and fro the course to, to collect child support but it's not happening. You know, so so there are a number of things. Um, and none of the conventions as far as I understand it is is distant from our national law. The time to act is now. We can. Promoting equity, a fair chance for every child, is a choice. A choice we can make. A choice we must make for their future and the future of our world. Guyana and the region look to the conference for guidance on steps which may be taken to help address cross-border issues pertaining to areas of family law and also improve legal certainty and predictability in trade. Guyana collaborated with UNICEF and the Hague Conference on Private International Law to host a regional meeting titled International Family Law Legal Cooperation and Commerce Promoting Human Rights and Cross-Border Trade in the Caribbean through the Hague Conference Convention. Guyana's hosting this conference is a demonstration of our commitment to examine ways in which we can strengthen our domestic and international human rights architecture, especially on the issues of international family law, legal cooperation, and commerce. Guyana this year, as you know, celebrated its 50th anniversary of independence. Over this time, and for the next 50 years, we have committed ourselves to achieving the objective of providing a good life for all Guyanese. A good life means more than economic growth. It is about the quality of life. It's about the creation of a caring and protective society, especially for its most vulnerable members, its children. A good life means respecting the rights of children, protecting them from abuse, and providing greater opportunities for them to have successful lives. A good life can be guaranteed at different levels, at the level of the family, which has the duty to protect its children, at the level of the community, which has a duty to cooperate for the protection of children, at the level of the state, which has a duty to provide legal protection and support for their citizens everywhere, and as we see tonight at the level of international organization here in the form of the Hague Con Conference on Private International Law, which is promoting international judicial and administrative cooperation in private law, especially international family and child protection law, civil procedures, and commercial law. The conference was organized as a response to a request to address cross-border family issues within the Caribbean region. The content and quality of the various HGCH conventions are worthy of embracing. They primarily seek to improve the everyday lives of individuals, families, and businesses by providing the legal framework that directly responds to challenges inherent in our international world. It is therefore necessary to sensitize the legal community in Ghana and extend it towards the region so that we may all embrace the spirit of cooperation that underpins the HCCH conventions. We must be cognizant that we are living in the age of globalization where so with, uh, solutions that confront us can only be solved when we work together to resolve them. The, conven the conventions of the HCCH are useful to bridge the gaps created by our differences by encouraging judicial and administrative cooperation between states in an effort to effectively settle international disputes. Partnering with HECH allows us to become proactively involved in the welfare, in the welfare of our citizens, especially those most vulnerable as well as contribute to the development of our economy. Participants were apprised on critical aspects of international family law, including child abduction, child protection, adoption, child maintenance, and mediation in the international family disputes. U.S. Judge Justice Kathy Serrett 
informed participants on the manner in which the Hague Convention on Child Abduction helps to protect the rights of children. The purpose of the convention is threefold. First, to protect children internationally from the harmful effects of wrongful removals or retention, to deter people from committing international abductions, and then to provide a prompt remedy for the return of abducted children. So let me stress, this convention is not a custody convention. The entire point of the convention is to get a child or children who have been wrongfully removed back to their habitual residence where a custody case may be held at that time to determine what is in the best interest of the child. So it is not a best interest determination being made when you're doing the hate convention proceeding. What you're doing is getting the child back to the habitual residence where there is the most evidence, where the family lives and belongs, and at that point, the custody determination can be made. Let me stress, the prompt return is really key to the convention. Um, the intent behind the convention is to get the children back as soon as possible, um, so that whatever needs to be done in the habitual residence may be done, the custody case or anything else that needs to be done. But promptness um, is key to the convention. Again, it is between signatory nations, obviously, um, children under the age of 16 who have been wrongfully removed. There are a number of defenses to return. They include consent or acquiescence by the left behind parent, a delay of more than one year by the left behind parent in commencing a Hague proceeding when the child has become well established in the new country. Custody rights were not exercised by the custodian, by the left behind parent. Return would expose the child to a grave risk of physical or psychological harm or would otherwise place the child in an intolerable situation. And finally, return would not be permitted by the fundamental principles of the requested stage relating to the protection of human rights fundamental freedoms. As participants became acquainted with the workings of the Child Adoption Convention, Justice Richard Williams from the Family Law Division of the Grant Court in the Grand Cayman, Cayman Islands, explained the legislative path undertaken by his country to implement provisions of this convention. What has the Cayman Islands done to enable it to resolve legal disputes relating to abducted children? Although under the sovereignty, uh, sovereignty of the United Kingdom, the Cayman Islands is self-governing. Uh, the Child Abduction and Custody Order of 1997 extended the United Kingdom Child Abduction and Custody Act of 1985. Importantly, Section 1-2 of the order provides that the provisions of the Convention on the Civil Aspects of International Child Abduction shall have force in Cayman. The Attorney General is our designated authority and the Grand Court is conferred with jurisdiction to hear the matters. The order also facilitates the admission into evidence without formal proof of foreign court orders and empowers the Grand Court to make declarations that a child has been unlawfully removed from another jurisdiction. Provision is also made for the grant of injury relief and for the ordering of reports, as well as the provision of legal aid for um, the cost of applications that are made. To supplement the order, uh, we have passed practice directions uh, which clarify the procedures uh, to explain what to do if a child has been brought or, or has been kept in the forest to be kept in the Cayman Islands. Uh, and uh, we also, in that practice direction, deal with what one should do if a child has been removed. Uh, in the same year, uh, practice direction was followed uh, dealing with the practices in the family division. Uh, in initiating direct contact communication with the judge and the foreign court. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that uh, those practice directions, or the issuing of those practice directions, was a direct consequence of the guidance given and the exchange of views between uh, the participants 
in the uh, it was 2013 meeting in Windsor, uh, which was extremely helpful and informative to us. The commencement on the presentation that divulged information on the Higgs Child Protection Convention and the wisdom behind its establishing was heard. We are in the Hague Conference trying to build an international child protection system and I'm convinced that UNICEF is also in the same direction and I think that CARICOM is also in the same direction and I think that we are all uh, judges here uh, working in family and civil law, uh, central authority officers in one way or the other contributing uh, is building a place where no, bother, no matter where the child is, he should get the, the deserved protection. It has been uh, repeated several times uh, during the course of this conference. The new world that we are living, interconnected, people moving all around the place, and the need to secure access to justice to, justice to everyone. Of course, Children should go first, so the need to have a, an international child protection seems to be certainly a priority. The Hague Child Protection Convention can be a regional tool implemented by CARICOM to protect children and to provide remedy and justice for families moving across borders as the region seeks to strengthen its free movement efforts. An overview and the benefits of the adoption convention was given by Valerie Barlow U.S. Central Authority for the Hague 1993 Intercountry Adoption Convention. This international agreement establishes safeguards with the goal of protecting the best interests of the child. It has helped to it has helped to provide greater security, predictability, and transparency for all of those involved in intercountry adoption. It entered into force for the United States in April 2008. And I found out today that over 20, 96 countries are party to this multilateral treaty. I actually had 95 written in my notes, but it's 96. As the U.S. Central Authority, the Department of State continues to support and acknowledge the benefits of the convention, recognizing that intercountry adoption should be, should be one of a range of options to provide for the welfare and best interests of children in every country in the world. Other areas covered during the conference include the Surface Convention, Apostille and the EAP program, Evidence and Access to Justice Conventions, Choice of Court Convention, and the Choice of Law Principles. The conference provided much needed information for legal luminaries, chief justices, and attorneys general from the region on steps needed to have legislative framework reflective of international standards to resolve disputes. Attorney General and the Minister of Legal Affairs, Basil Williams, explains the importance of the Hague Convention. For example, in the area of international family law, where family disputes and dissolutions span continents, the conventions after offer tremendous benefit to ensure the human rights of children are protected. The Abduction Convention, the Adoption Convention, the Child Maintenance Convention, the Child Protection Convention, will pave the way to secure the best interests of children and preserving the most important institution in society, the family. They will provide a legal mechanism for us in the region to collectively ensure that the human rights of children are preserved. The Choice of Court Convention, along with the Hague Choice of Law Principles, guarantees investors to either the country or the region of the laws that will be applied and the court that the matter will be heard in the event of a dispute. It is in the area of legal cooperation and commerce, which is an important area for our region as we forge ahead in our mission to greater regional integration and cooperation. International trade disputes that confront us can be settled through the solutions offered by the HECH conventions, which have as the underlying principle cooperation among states to resolve disputes. The conventions contribute to the ease of doing international business by removing the legal obstacles that hinder any thriving economy. For instance, they simplify and expedite judicial proceedings, ensure reciprocity as it relates to the enforcement of judgments in foreign jurisdictions. Additionally, they promote legal certainty by allowing contracting parties to choose both the choice of court and to hear the dispute on the law which govern the proceedings. This creates an environment of cooperation 
and encourages investment and trade. The conference also saw Dr. Christoph Bernasconi, Higgs Conference Secretary General, hosting a series of meetings that sought to have multilateral collaboration on tackling cross-border family issues and those pertaining to commerce. Dr. Bernasconi met with CARICOM Secretary General, Attorneys General, Ministers of Justice and Chief Justices, all in a bid to develop a regional approach to stem cross-border issues. This conference hosted by Guyana in collaboration with UNICEF was the third to be held in the Caribbean. The participation of Attorneys General, Chief Justices and other senior legal luminaries provided the platform needed by other territories to address cross-border child issues and issues of legal commerce. As Guyana continues to build on established foundations towards providing a solid legal framework of child protection and cross-border trade, the commitment has been given for Guyana to become a member of the Hague Conference on Private International Law and the party to the necessary conventions. That has brought us to the end of Guyana 411 for this week. Be sure to check out our other programs on our website, www.gina.gov.gy. We are also on Facebook and YouTube. I am Renette LeFleur. Do have a great week ahead.